Before you build your workbench, there are a few decisions you need to make first, like the kind of material that you're going to use, how you're going to attach it, and how you're going to protect it. Who knew there were so many choices, but there are, and strongly held opinions, and we're going to talk about all of them in this video. Hello, happy DIYers and woodworkers. I'm Ayanna from Heartwood Art. If you're enjoying these tips, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And come on over to heartwoodart.com for more tips and build plans, like how to build this workbench. Okay, let's dive in. The best way to determine the material you want to use for your bench top depends on how you're gonna use your workbench. Are you gonna use it as an assembly table? Are you going to be pounding on it? Are you going to be doing stain and painting? And then, are you going to be doing glue-ups? Okay, now that you've determined how you're going to use it, let's talk about materials. As you can see, I've got three-quarter inch plywood on this one that I've protected on the top, and it works for me because mainly this is an assembly table for me. And then, if you're going to be pounding on it, whatever, you may want to think about hardwood. And you're going to glue up lots of strips like a butcher block for that. And then, if you think you need to go cheap, there's MDF. Mm -mm, don't do it. It's one of the worst materials in the world for a bench top, unless you're going to take extra steps to protect it. So, you know, if you have to, go ahead and spend a little more money on the plywood instead. Okay, now let's talk about how you're going to protect it. You can put any kind of plywood on here, even if it's unsanded, and then put a piece of masonite over the top, and that comes in one eighth inch, quarter inch, whatever you want, but it'll give you a smooth surface on that too. Or, if you could get another piece of plywood that is sanded, but only a quarter of an inch thick, that'll keep you from doing a lot of work too, and you put that right over the main piece of plywood that you've got. And then some people even put a sheet of laminate on it. That's especially good if you're going to be doing painting, staining, whatever, glue-ups. It just wipes right off of there. So, you know, the underlayment of it can just be any good piece of plywood for it. You put all these covers over the top of it. Now, there's another thing to think about if you're doing glue-ups, because you really don't want the glue to be sticking this. So you can, you know, lay craft paper or tarp or anything that you want over your bench to do that. Another way to think about this is what I did here. I just put some good boiled linseed oil on it and then some paste wax over the top. And glue, you just knock it right off the top of that. And no, none of the oil comes through to your workpiece and none of the wax gets on your workpiece either. Some people have the idea that what's on here is going to come off of your work. Uh-uh. The wood is going to soak that in. Okay, now let's talk about attaching your top to your bench. And you really need to think through this before you actually assemble the bench. Wood moves. And that's a big thing that professional builders, you know, kind of hit on the head of DIY or soon. They don't get that in how they're doing attachments with it because it's going to absorb moisture and different parts of the bench are going to move in different ways. So you need to be careful about how to attach it. Now, one of the big ways that people like to do this is with wood cleats. And so it's like a block of wood that has a little tongue sticking out and you attach the block to the top and then you cut a big um, hole, uh, literally a slot thing, in the back side of your rail for this little part of the tongue to go into it. So that way your top can move side to side. Now when you get it all the way around, it's not going to be jiggly on you or anything. It's going to stay in there but it kind of floats your top over your bench. Now, if you don't want to do these wood cleats and cut that big strip in it for it or that big slot in there for it, you can actually do this with angle brackets that do the same sort of thing. They're a lot easier to attach to. And so for your rail, you only have to cut a small slit going across and you can easily do that with a router and probably one or two passes because the tongue on this, just a little piece of metal, doesn't need a whole lot to go into and just one screw up through. Uh, it's kind of an S shape to go around your rail for that. So lots easier to attach, probably a lot easier to do if you want your table to float on there. 
Now, another way to attach it that's becoming really popular are these figure eight things. And you actually have to just make like almost a countersink in one side in your rail or at the legs for that. And they have less movement in them for it. They kind of uh, rotate more than go side to side with it. They sort of rotate for any kind of movement that your top's gonna have, and they're pretty easy to install. Now, another way to do this that a lot of DIYers are familiar with are pocket holes. And it's a lot easier to put those pocket holes into your rails before you do the assembly. Ask me how I know. That's how I attach this one. It also makes it super easy for you to remove this top to be able to change it out if you want to. Now, the least desirable way to do this is from the top with brad nails because at some point you probably are going to want to change out your top and brad nails make that almost impossible or really hard to do it cleanly. And then you don't want to do screws in from the top either because you're going to have to countersink them so nothing scratches as you move things across the bench. But in that countersink, all your dust and glue and all kinds of stuff get down in it. So that's really not a desirable way either. I sure do hope you found this video helpful and all the things you need to think through before you start building your workbench, especially getting your top on. And come on over to heartwoodart.com, see how I built this workbench, and I'll see you in the shop.